A few weeks ago, I was watching one of my favorite scuba channels on YouTube, Divers Ready. And James, during that episode, said this. Now let me tell you the number one reason, without a shadow of a doubt, again, in my experience, why students self-select out of training that we provide here in South Florida. Are you ready? Pin your ears back, here it comes. Physical conditioning. So in today's episode, we're gonna take a look at what the science says of what is safe to do in terms of exercise and diving, prior to, after, and even during a dive. And we're gonna take a look at, does exercise around my dive schedule increase or decrease my risk of decompression sickness? So let's not let a lack of physical conditioning prevent us from achieving our scuba diving goals. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hi guys, welcome to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle, and as always, if you love to scuba dive, dive into Everything Scuba to join us every week. So today we're gonna to talk about exercise and diving. There's been some controversy over the years about what is and is not safe to do. So I'm gonna delve into some of the literature and look at what the science says in terms of exercise and what types of exercise we can do and what can we do safely. And the real question is, exercising prior to or after a dive or even during a dive, does it increase my risk for decompression sickness because of bubble formation that could occur? Or does exercise actually mitigate or decrease my risk of decompression sickness? There have been multiple studies though that have looked into the world of exercise and diving. Number one, why do we have to be fit to dive anyway? What we do know is that people who have greater cardiovascular fitness and strength have a decreased risk for decompression sickness overall. And that's because there have been studies to show that those individuals have less bubble formation post-dive and then theoretically should have less risk of decompression sickness. And I use the word theoretically because decompression sickness is a multifactorial event. There are multiple reasons that can occur to create a decompression sickness in an individual and sometimes even the fittest individuals in the world could still suffer from that. So as divers, keeping up a fitness routine should be part of our everyday world, regardless of whether we're diving or not. Obviously it has other health benefits to you other than your ability to dive. But if you're one of those people out there who likes to work out every single day, whether you have a dive scheduled or not, let's take a look at what the science says of what is safe to do prior to, during, and after a dive. Between 2001 and 2004, Norwegian researchers used rats as an animal model where they made the rats work out 24 hours prior to a dive, and then they had a dive, and then they did some Doppler studies. And what those studies showed is those rats that worked out 24 hours prior to their dive actually had fewer venous bubbles after the dive. So then in 2004, those same Norwegian researchers applied the rat model to humans, where they made people work out for 40 minutes using a moderate to heavy intermittent schedule 24 hours prior to a dive. They then did a chamber dive to 60 feet or 18 meters for 30 minutes. Post dive, they did Doppler studies. And once again, it showed those individuals who worked out for 40 minutes, 24 hours prior to the dive, had fewer venous bubbles. In 2005, the US Navy did a study of their divers where they made them work out for 45 minutes of moderate to heavy intensity two hours prior to a dive. They then did a chamber dive down to 100 feet or 30 meters for 30 minutes. Once again, post-dive ultrasound showed decreased venous bubble formation in those divers. French researchers then took this one step further. They made their Navy divers work out one hour prior to a dive, and they did the same depth and the same time. And once again, decreased venous bubble formation. So potentially working out prior to a dive may decrease your risk of decompression sickness. But there is a but, and we'll get to that. But what about working out after a dive? Well, in 2006, another Navy diver study where they made divers work out intensely for 10 minutes cycling a stationary bicycle after a 30 minute, 100 feet or 30 meter dive. They started monitoring the divers 20 minutes after they surfaced by Doppler ultrasound during the cycling event and then for a period of time after they were done cycling, 
They also studied them. And once again, they showed that the divers that worked out after diving had decreased venous bubble formation. Let me read you a quote from the Journal of Exercise, Endothelium, and Diving Physiology. Based on the above mentioned findings, it seems that high intensity pre-dive exercise and moderate exercise performed during decompression stops would appear to be a wise prescription for reducing the number of venous gas bubbles after air dives. However, before these procedures can be widely adopted as a predictable safeguard against DCS, we need further standardization related to the exercises, duration, and intensity. Remember I said there was a but to this? Well, the but to this is the fact that these studies were done on very young, healthy, athletically trained individuals. And so we can't instantly extrapolate and apply those same principles to the rest of the general population. Much like when the US Navy put together their dive tables, it took years of research to end up with what we now know as the recreational dive planner. When it comes to diving, fortune tends to favor the conservative. So let's talk about some general principles of what we feel is safe and not safe to do around your dive schedule. Number one, be fit. Way prior to your dive trip or your dive vacation or any time that you're diving. Make fitness routine a part of your normal daily activities. And again, from Dan, what they're telling us is individuals who work out with a heart rate of about 70% of your maximum rate for a minimum of 90 minutes per week, generally you're gonna be fit enough to take on most dives. And in addition to the cardiovascular, you should add some strength training to that regimen. And if you're a fitness fanatic who absolutely wants to work out even during a busy dive schedule, here are some of the principles to keep in mind. Cease any moderate or heavy exercise four to six hours prior to your first dive of the day. And what about after a dive? Well, we do know from the studies that the first two hours after a dive is when we see the greatest chance of bubble formation. And so the general recommendation is wait at least four hours before performing any type of moderate intensity workout. So what kind of workout is safe to do after a dive? Moderate aerobic exercise. So things like riding your bike, running, walking, all of those things, good to go. Things that you should avoid post-dive would be anything that increases the strain on muscles and joints. So for example, heavy lifting or strength training post-dive. In addition to this, you should avoid anything that is going to produce any high cadence of the limbs, such as sprinting. So what about during a dive? Well, we're not suggesting that you take your treadmill underwater with you. During your descent and during your bottom time, we want to decrease the intensity of that exercise because we want to decrease on gassing. By increasing our activity, we're actually going to uptake gas faster. However, what some of the studies have shown is that during your ascent and at your safety stop, limb movements, mild, non-strenuous uh, exercise, if you want to think of it that way, actually improves off-gassing by helping circulation, by helping us move blood through our system, returning it back to our lungs, we're actually promoting the off-gassing of that nitrogen that we took up during our dive. Interestingly though, going to sleep immediately after a dive is not a recommended thing to do. And that's because we're not moving our limbs, we're not off-gassing as efficiently. And also if you do start to develop DCS symptoms, you are going to be much slower to react to or even notice that that is occurring. So don't fall asleep immediately after your dive. So guys, I'd be very interested to know, what does your pre and post dive workout regimen look like? Drop some comments down below and share that information with us. So if you're on a dive trip or dive vacation, treat it as just that. Do the hard work prior to coming. Make yourself a fit diver. And also, if this episode has helped to point you in the right direction so you can feel safe about working out in and around your dive schedule, please hit that like button. It'll help share this with other scuba divers. So as I stated, a lot of this information comes directly from Divers Alert Network or DAN. And one of the benefits to being a DAN member is that you will receive their publication called Alert Diver. 
It has a lot of these types of articles in it about safety, but also has lots of other stuff in there that is of interest to divers. But the real question is, do you know Dan? And if not, click the link down below me. We're going to find out a lot more about Divers Alert Network.